Okay, let us start the session. It's about the <coughs> popular terminologies, terms of history in a single video. We'll discuss the very popular terms because if you check the previous year's questions, you can see terms are an important or a favorite area for UPSC. The economic terms of ancient medieval times or certain cultural terms <coughs> or certain uh, like uh, literary terms or religious terms or terms related to taxation, terms related to certain like uh, teachings, philosophies or religious cultural movements of ancient medieval modern, all are asked in the previous exams, if you check, okay, thoroughly for the last 10 years. So today, uh, certain verdict terms, we yeah, are starting with this, we have already done the ter terminology series, you can watch them, here you see, transmigration of the soul, UPC already asked you this type of the questions. For example, transmigration of the soul is mentioned in which of the following Vedic literary sources. Okay, first time it made appearance in this particular sources. Or this uh, Varnashrama Dharma, Ashramas, you know, Brahmacharya, Grihastha, Vana, Prastha, Sanyasin, Ashramas, that is discussed here, first time discussed in this particular Vedic literature. Or for example, there is Satyam Eva Jayade, or there is that dialogue between Nachigeda and Yama, you see. So these incidents are asked in the prelims examination multiple times. Now there is a probability of asking in match the pair type of questions. Different events and their related sources, okay. So let us see, there is transmigration of the soul. This is first discussed in this Brahadarayaniga uh, Upanishad. You know classification of Upanishads. You know Upanishad is Vedanta, that is end of the Vedas, you see. Yes, goal of one's life is achieving salvation and they don't give any importance to these uh, uh, so-called uh, rituals and sacrifices, okay? They give importance to that path of wisdom, okay? So one of the Upanishad, Brahadarayaniga Upanishad, in which for the first time there is mention of transmigration of the soul, immortality of the soul, four ashrams that is discussed in Jabala Upanishad, Satyameva Jayade, that is from Mundaga Upanishad, then fourfold Varna system, you know, fourfold Varna system, you know, Rigveda, it is having, it's having different mandalas, you know, mandalas chapters. The first mandala and tenth mandala, they are treated as, you know, the mandalas added in the later Vedic times, okay. So, Purusha Sukta mandala talk about the, uh, you know, this Chadurvarna system and that Chadurvarna system or fourfold Varna division that is taken from Purusha Sukta mandala, that is the tenth chapter of Rigveda, okay. Then you see Trimurti God, that concept is taken from this, uh, Maitrayani Upanishad, then this origin of universe discussed in the tenth mandala of Rigveda, Sabha Samadhi, twin daughters of Prachapadi, Sabha Samadhi, twin daughters of Prachapadi, that is discussed in this Adharva Veda, you know, and uh, when you uh, lay in this Vedic literature, you know that uh, there is, there is a, there is a Samhida, which is classified as uh, Shukla, uh, like, uh, uh, what is that? Uh? White book and a black book, that is, uh, that, what, what is that a Sanskrit term used for that? Ah. There is, there is a term used for that. That is Ajurveda, Ajurveda that is dealing with these various procedures of the rituals and sacrifices. Talk about the formulas and these, uh, like, you know, codes for these rituals and sacrifices. And Shukla Ajurveda is there and Krishna Ajurveda is there. So, Shukla Krishna Ajurveda, Shukla is the original, the, the rules and the conditions, etc. And uh, Krishna, we discussed, that is commentary on those uh, rules, okay. So, that way UPC can ask the question. There is a book which talks about the magical spells and charms to ward off the evil spirit, okay, or to uh, get rid of the diseases. That is Adharva Veda, Adharva Veda, that is regarded as the work of non aliens okay. So, have an idea about the Vedic literature and the divisions and terms used to the so this is very important, please note down. Then <coughs> coming to this Mauryan age, you know, certain important terms are there, which is related to their administration, which is related to their bureaucracy and their uh, like uh, economy. So Yuvaraj is a term which is used for crown prince, you know. Crown provinces are governed by count, crown princes, you know. Then there is, uh, there is uh, Samahartha, is the chief revenue collector. Yes, Yukta is the subordinate revenue, uh, revenue officer. Then Shulka Tiksha is the officer in charge of royal income. Officer in charge of royal income. Then this uh, Prashasti is the prison head. Sannidatta is treasury head. 
then this uh, koshadhyaksha is treasury officer nayaga is uh, ch city ch security chief then vyabhagariga is chief judge uh, Kar karmandiga is head of industries and factories dandapala is head of police durgapala is head of royal fort okay so the question can be like this they can ask you the question which is match the pair okay with reference to these administrative terms or with reference to revenue terms with reference to economic terms of mauryan age consider the following pairs that way you can expect a question so please try to understand the popular terms and their definitions or their meanings okay precious see yes that that is inscription that is inscription okay so take care sometimes you know you know the certain vernacular uh, like a usages you know this this you can easily you know decipher by connecting with or relating with some vernacular usages in the in the regional areas you know certain terms even today also used okay with the same meaning so such if you know such things you know you can easily come up with the answers see anna pala is head of food grains department annam annam you see yes rajugas are that uh, officer in charge of land measurement okay officer in charge of land measurement pradeshigas are district administrator aharadhiksha is the mining officer the lohadhiksha is metallurgy officer lakshanadhiksha is the coin minting then lavanadhiksha is the officer in charge of that salt department then sornadhiksha is officer in charge of gold department yes ayudhadhiksha is uh, weapon department then say uh, kunyadhyaksha is officer of the forest then uh, panyadhyaksha is officer of commerce department then shunyadhyaksha is slaughterhouse officer so these terms are important because departmental administration mauryan administration is known for yes you know many superintendents being appointed as the head of the departments okay it's a highly centralized administration there is proper connection between central administration and provincial administration and local administration so please try to understand the division of administration you know central and provincial and the local administration those administrative units and those terms are important please take care of it yes 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 it's a huge it's a, it's, a, it's a broader centralized administrative machinery they maintained now gupta h terms are there ubariga is the provincial governor kumara mathyas are you know they are officers kumara mathyas or these ayuktas are officers they 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 act as a link between this uh, central and provincial administration yes so home provinces mostly you know ruled by these guys so they often act as a link between central administration and provincial administration they are higher officers top or ranked officers okay then sandhi vigrahiya vigrahiya that is foreign minister minister of war and peace sandhi is something which is called sandhi sandhi you know treaty okay so it's a minister of war and peace first appeared under the rule of samudra gupta yes peace talk okay that uh, talk of negotiations diplomacy so because the foreign ministry is always supposed to be you know a person with the uh, excellence of diplomacy they only can become the ambassadors or foreign ministers etc okay now see mahabaldikarta is a commander in chief uh, then this uh, maha pradihara that is the chief of palace guards then pustapala is record keeper maintained a record of land transactions in a district they were also known as uh, karniga so th these terms very much you know like a, like a sing with a, the common usages pusta or pustagam you know something which is book uh, like a, what is a, a record keeper or book keeper that kind of the idea is there vishaya is you know vishaya administrative unit only okay vishaya they were divided into small parts called vidis and they were villages consisted of lowest unit of administration uh, then mahatama mahataga mahathara they are elder who assisted the gramiga in the village administration so these are officers related to village administration they they assist the gramigas then aharigas during this reign of harsha aharigas looked after this land given in charity samandas are feudal chiefs samanda system feudalism feudal chiefs samanda rajas okay then coming to gupta's taxation bhaga is bhaga was a term used for king's share of the grains produced boga is yes the periodic supplies of firewood etc to the king shulka is used for urban tolls 
then hiranya is king share of the agricultural produce which is paid in cash then vishti is forced to labor vishti you remember that was asked previously so these terms are important which you please take care that mauryan terms are there gupta terms are there then these religious terms are there for example buddhism jainism then coming to this this is buddhist terms here buddhist terms ashtanga marga eight fold path you know nirvana is that is enlightenment or maybe extinction of the flame of desire extinction of the flame of extinction of the yes yes, yes that is end of the sorrows or end of the sufferings extinction of the flame of desire arhat is who have achieved nirvana bodhisattva is buddha to be shramanas are buddhist to monks then there is ubhasakas are lay followers mahaparinirvana is final death okay some terms related to arhat arhada arhat you know one who deserves or achieves you know so the difference is like who have achieved nirvana one who have achieved nirvana bodhisattva is like yet to be they are eligible eligible but purposefully delays his salvation because of his compassion he stays back to help other human beings to achieve salvation yes now ashta mahasthanas related to buddhism try to understand what are the popular ashta mahasthanas you know uh, yes i mean the places holy places associated with the buddhism please take care uh, tadda or tadagada is one of the titles of buddha anatha is soullessness okay uh, soullessness so some very popular terms which is uh, which is you know usually upsc asked in the exams that you be very clear with karnadaryo ipo oru bandhu illatha chala terms ok chodichalam certain unknown alien terms are asked you know if you know the basic common terms you know you can apply the elimination and you will come up with the right answer now see not among the ashtamaha sthanas so to answer this you should first know what are the ashtamaha sthanas am i right parmida was asked parmida parmida is uh, yeah 10 uh, precepts or vows observed by monks generosity morality renunciation wisdom energy patience truthfulness determination loving kindness and uh, equanimity so they are regarded as parmida parmida terms they are 10 vows taken by the monks eh ah so actually something which is very much related to the core teachings or doctrines of this uh, buddhism or jainism buddhism or jainism buddhism okay so it's important that you should know what are the core terms related to buddhism jainism okay poshada pradimoksha is rules of 150 articles part of vinaya pidaga you know vinaya pidaga sutta pidaga abhidhamma pidaga you know then poshada is fortnightly meeting in the sanghas sangha is buddhist order vasa is retreat during rainy season by the monks vihara Vihara is Buddhist monastery. Shramanas means Buddhist monks in general. Now, Ubhacaya is a spiritual leader. Sankhedas are four noble truths. Chaityas are temples of Buddhist. Now, coming to Jainism, terms related to Jainism. Terms related to Jainism. There is Basadis, which is Jain monastery. Kaivilya is enlightenment. Jina is conqueror. Nirgranda is free from all bonds. Okay. So the solution is very simple. You can even, you know, like when it comes to Jainism, Buddhism, you please try to connect, I mean, the events of Buddhism, Jainism, or the philosophies, teachings of Buddhism, Jainism, and the related terminologies. That way you can easily follow. Okay. Pajusana is Jain festival. Salagana is voluntary death. Okay. Then Anupreksha is tall religious topics. Asarva is entry of karma into soul. Entry of karma into soul. So that is a bondage. One has to liberate from that cycle of karma. Okay. Then see, Samvara is cessation of influence of karma. Narjara is exhausting of existing karma. Siddha Shila is top of the world soul resides in a bliss after salvation. Kashaya is four passions. That is Krodha, Loba, Mana, Maya. Okay. So, eh? It's all actually. If you, if you, if you if you look into this heterodox sect, you know their teachings. So many striking similarities are in their teachings. At the same time, some differences also there. For example, immortal soul is a belief in Jainism, but in Buddhism it is mortal soul. So, 
see coming to buddhism the problem is like a um, you know the original buddhism which is the the hinayana buddhism and uh, other buddhisms you know when you come to uh, like nammal session varuna mahayana buddhism thilekum vajrayana buddhism thilekum tantric buddhism thilekku ok varumbo ayinte teachings enna appade maari marnu pogunnund then there comes this rebirth of buddha itself you will see incarnations of buddha there is bodhisattvas original buddhism thil padipichathinakke nere edirayittana pinnide varunathu അപ്പോൾ സ്പെസിഫിക് ആയിട്ട് നമ്മളോട് ചോദിക്കുകയാണെങ്കിൽ സപ്പോസ് ദ ഓർത്തഡോക്സ് ബുദ്ധിസം എന്ന് സ്പെസിഫിക് ആയിട്ട് ചോദിക്കുകയാണെങ്കിൽ അതിലില്ല പക്ഷേ ബുദ്ധിസം ഇൻ ജനറൽ ചോദിച്ചു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ നമുക്കത് പറയാൻ പറ്റത്തില്ല കാരണം മഹായന ബുദ്ധിസത്തിൽ ആ തോട്ടുണ്ട് ഓക്കെ യെസ് യെസ് ചോളൻ ചോള അഡ്മിനിസ്ട്രേഷൻ ദിസ് ഇസ് കമ്മിങ് ടു ഇമ്പീരിയൽ ചോളസ് യു നോ ചോള അഡ്മിനിസ്ട്രേഷൻ സം ടേംസ് യു ട്രൈ ടു അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് യെസ് ദ വെരി പോപ്പുലർ ടേംസ് ആർ yes that that some terms related to this uh, chola uh, like uh, what is called uh, land administration types of land land measurement land taxes etc velan vage is land of non brahmana peasant proprietors i mean land which is assigned to non brahmins okay then brahmadaya is land gifted to brahmins okay agrahara you know agrahara yes then shalaboga is land for the maintenance of a school shalaboga is land for the maintenance of a school then there is devadana which is land gifted to temples okay then there is uh, uh, palli chandanam which is land donated to jain institutions because these terms maybe you are seeing for the first time but these are important from prelims point of view okay palli chandanam which is land donated to uh, yes uh, sorry uh, palli chandam palli chandam is a land donated to jain institutions okay then perundaram sirundaram you know that uh, royal officials you know higher officials in their administration kadame is the main land tax then uh, vetti is you know forced labor this is even we have seen in this particular gupta administration also okay then there is uh, what is that eh tamil term tamil term kani udayar okay land owning farmers then ulukudi is tenant farmers valanadu is group of nadu created for revenue collection okay then puravu vadi what is that tinaikalam puruvadi tinaikalam what is that department that looked after taxes eripatti is tax uh, main i mean tax collected for maintenance of that uh, irrigation tank you know then you heard that term taniyur taniyur you remember uh, it's a huge uh, huge huge uh, tract of area big enough as a kuram group of villages you know taniyur so these terms are important here yeah. many terms we already covered but these terms again very important there is chance of uh, asking uh, such a terms or maybe sometimes match the pair some chola terms and uh, pallava terms or chola terms and pandin you know terms or chola terms and sangam chola terms you know or chola terms and the gupta terms so main match the pair also they can ask you the questions be very clear with that uh, pandya empire okay so after there is absorption of this kingdom by pandyas and coming to this pandya empire mangalam mangalam means brahmin communities with the uh, irrigation amenities you know land which is assigned to brahmin communities with the uh, irrigation amenities okay then elittu mandavam royal secretariat uh, then uh, tattarkani that is iron smiths land shalabogam which is territory allocated to brahmins then takku maniyan maniyam that is carpenters land okay so uh, tach tach tachan 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 is carpenter yes so you see that uh, these are some terms related to this uh, pandya kingdom pandya kingdom okay so take care if you ask me these are very funny these are very funny but the reality is like a uh, upsc they on regular intervals ask this uh, terminology questions also so it is better to cover it as quick as possible then again this is something which is from ncrt you know that uh, some important terms from ncrt it's again uh, you see that you already studied this gahapadi you seen that am i right gahapadi gahapadi is uh, owner master head of a household okay gaha gaha grahasthan grahapadi okay then see agrahara land granted to these uh, brahmins agraharam sadar in different parts of our neighborhood devana piya piyadarshi that is the term given to or maybe used by ashoka himself okay that he called himself vimal kumar similar a similar way you see that ashoka called himself i am the devana priya priyadarshi beloved of the god you see then what is that kutti shankaran ah 
Kuta Garashala. That is hut uh, with the pointed. Oh, it's a, it's a Kurta or Kutta, you see. Yes, that is hut with the pointed roof. In Buddhism, a place where traveling mendicants halted and debates took place in them. Yes, it's uh, almost similar to a Satram, you know, where the Buddhist mendicants, you know, uh, like uh, they halt for some time and they were engaged in the debates, okay. Then Vanik is term used for traders. Vanik, you know, that is traders. Then what is next? Charanachitra, storytelling, skull paintings. Then Shalabanjiga, that is cultures of beautiful women swinging from edge of the gateway, holding on to tree often seen in Buddhist reliefs. Manigramam, then uh, that uh, Anju Vannam and uh, Nana Deshi, these are certain terms used for the guild, trade guilds, okay, trade guilds. This was asked, uh, Manigramam was asked, you remember? So these are terms used for this guild system in South India, different trade guilds in South India, okay. Coming to medieval India, certain terms are there, you know that uh, Hundi is the Tasaf is there, Ubari is there, Patwari is there, you see these are different, different terms you might have seen when you studied this medieval India, which is again very important for UPC. Coming to coins, coming to coins, you see that different coins and terms used, uh, Tanka is Mughal Empire, this coin issued during this Mughal Empire, yes, that is, that is, you know, silver coins, that represent the silver coins. Uh, Dam is, you know, that is copper coins, Rupiah is uh, silver coins, Tanga is gold coins, Jital is, I mean, during this medieval India, at the same time, you remember that uh, the same coin, you know, called by different names at the various uh, occasions. Delhi Sultanate, you know, they given one name, Mughals given another name, then this, during this, uh, the Sur Empire given another name, that variations also there. That's why, in general, Tanga in medieval India, it is gold. Then Jital is, you know, Delhi Sultanate, that is copper. Then Gaddiana is, you know, during Chola's dynasty's time, it is gold. Dinara, during Gupta's times and medieval India, it is gold. Pana is, is silver. Dinar is Delhi Sultanate, you know, that is gold. Kash is gold, you know. So, these are generic terms used for the currency or coins during this medieval India, okay. So, different terms used for gold, silver, copper coins in this medieval India that you cover, okay. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, again there is uh, Varaha is there, different terms, you know. So just to try to understand how these go copper, silver, gold coins being called uh, in the medieval times. During Delhi Sultanate, Vijayanagar or this Bahmani or this Mughals, how these names are changed, okay. Chachar is, yes, Chachar is land, you know, out of cultivation for three to four years. That is Chachar land. Then there is Cartas is permit given by Portuguese to traders. Okay, there are blue water policies there, you remember. I mean, yes, the traders must get to the permission from them, uh, from these Portuguese, then only their commercial ships are allowed to, you know, yes, uh, pass through. Yes, so this is uh, blue water policies of these Portuguese governors. So Cartas is permit given by Portuguese to these uh, overseas uh, traders or maybe other uh, like uh, maritime traders. Dagi is system of branding of horses and animals. Then this Daroga is minor officer in charge of local office. Then Farman is or Farman is royal order. You see that a different people issued a Farman to British East India Company. Then see Gargi is a hill fort, mud fort made of this thick clay. Then Hadis is a acts or words of this Arabian prophet. Then Hundi is bill of exchange. Okay. So you take care. These are asked. These are asked and UPC multiple times. You know, same thing. They will interchange like this uh, same wine in the, you know, new bottle kind of the concept is there. So you imagine that uh, uh, they can change, they can confuse you. But if you know the fundamental things, you can answer it. That is the uh, funny part. Ichara is revenue farming. Jagirdar is a holder of Jagir. Jamiat is military following. Then Karori is a revenue official. Okay, Karori is revenue official. Take care. Mulhid is a heretic, one who renounces the faith. Pahi is non-resident cultivator, Peshkar is agent manager of finances, Shariat is Muslim religious law, Sichuda is prostration, then Tasof is mysticism, Ubari is temporary occupant, tenant at will, then Vashdar is a salaried officer, Zimmi or Dimmi is protected non-Muslim. Okay. Paibos kissing the feet of the king, you see Paibos, 
Patwa Patwari is village accountant. Peshkash is tribute from these uh, subordinate rulers to Mughal ruler. Peshkash, okay. Then Polaji is land constantly in cultivation. Uh, Rayat is subjects or payers of land revenue. Then Sire or Sire is taxes other than land revenue, transit duties. Then Saranjam is land allotted in lieu of military services. Sadeshmugi is one tenth of the assessed income. Usually, this Chaud and Sadeshmugi applied in this, uh, you know, applied by origins and forced by these uh, Maratha rulers on these non Maratha uh, states. Okay. Then again, medieval India, some economic terms are there. Fawasil is there. It was asked by UPC. Fawasil is something surplus revenue. This, uh, what is called uh, this, this guy, who is the, uh, yeah, this Iktadar. Iktadar, you know, that officer, he was given a piece of land and, uh, uh, he, 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 you know, his salary, I mean, parallel to his salary, he can collect the uh, revenue from his uh, land, the surplus revenue, which is, you know, Surplus revenue means which is excess to his salary, okay, something other than the salary or extra to the salary, that extra money, extra income, that he has to pay back to the state, that is called a fawasil, okay. So, you see, Iktadar is assigned with a, a land revenue or Iktadar, he, he has that right to collect revenue from the land assigned to him and the surplus revenue he has to pay to, I mean, he can collect the revenue that is in accordance with his salary or it is, you know, like equal to his salary. And if there is surplus income, that surplus income he has to give it to this uh, state, okay. That is called, that surplus revenue is called uh, Fawasil. Then Charach is cattle tax levied on grazing. This comes booty captured in war. Zakat is religious tax paid by Muslims as charity for the welfare of their uh, co-religionist. Then Ushari is tax levied on land held by Muslims and assessed by natural means. Then uh, Sondar is a loan given to peasants. Then Kalisha is area whose revenue was reserved for Sultan's treasury. Then see, Kalisha Landi, you remember? Yes. Bishwa is a common measure of areas in North India. Then uh, uh, Mashahad is measurement of land. Gari is house tax. Jishya is tax levied on non-Muslims in their capacity as protected subjects. Kharaj is land revenue realized from non-Muslims, okay? So please try to understand some economic terms used in the medieval India. Some very popular economic terms which is used in the medieval India, you should have a clear idea about this because this is again a favorite area for UPC, you know. This is somewhere, you know, most of the aspirants, you know, get uh, trapped. But if you know the basic meaning of these terms, these type of the questions are easily answerable. That is the beauty. Which one? Ah, courage. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, uh, the charge is cattle tax levied on grazing. Cattle tax levied on, this is land revenue realized from non-Muslims, okay. And it is also known as Karaji, also known as uh, Karaji Jizriya or Mal, okay. So the terms, similar terms are there, so sometimes it is confusing. But uh, please try to understand that, uh, yes, a particular word has a particular meaning, okay. Even if you know the meaning of that, literally meaning of that word, most of this type of the terminology questions are answerable, that is the beauty, okay. Now, other terms during the time of these Mughals, please take care. Yes, Wasir is the head of the, uh, head of the yes, revenue department. Diwan is responsible for all income and expenditure, control over this. This is, you know, the terms in particular to Mughal administration. The same terms have different connotations in different context. That is also very important. Usually, Wasir is prime minister, no? Prime minister. But in this context, he is the finance minister too. So that you take care. Yes, uh, Divan, responsible for all income and expenditure, control over Kalisha and Jagir. Mirsaman is in charge of imperial household. Divani Baitad maintained the roads and government buildings. Mirmanshi is royal correspondence. Sadhuru Sudar is in charge of charitable religious endowments. Khasiul Khasad is head of judicial department. Mutashib is inspector of public morals and markets. Then Mushrifi Mamalik is accountant general. Then uh, Maustaf E. Mamalik is Auditor General. Then Daroga E. Dak Chauki is Officer in Charge of Imperial Post. Then Miri Arch is uh, Officer in Charge of Petition. Uh, Wakwa Navis is uh, News Reporters. Okay. So just see, nothing to do with this actually. Just try to know the terms and their meanings. That's uh, uh, actually, <laughs> actually uh, no shortcuts are there. 
but still i think that uh, the people of uh, north indian states they will get an edge because most of these terms i mean you know derived from this uh, like uh, uh, arabic persian hindi urdu terms so that is mostly see i'm not saying any kind of this uh, discriminations you know when the sangam or these uh, chola terms are asked the south indians are having an edge you know <laughs> when this uh, like uh, delhi sultanate mughal empire is asked uh, or gupta empire is asked uh, obviously so those things are there because one of my topper yes he said sir i answered a question benjaras just because of the reason i stayed in kolkata slums for a few days there the traders are called benjaras benjara community is staying there they are engaged in long distance trade because of that memory only i answered so you know sometimes what these things are common in use even now nowadays also sometimes you can see these terms are used at least in the literary works you know these are used okay cultural works these are used that's it there we are ending up this session so there you see some popular terms are the uh, terms related to the administration terms related to administration means judicial administration revenue administration civil administration these things are very very important for you try to understand some terms used in vedic age some terms used in mauryan age some terms used in gupta age some terms used in buddhism jainism some terms of medieval india especially that the cholas times is the then this uh, uh, bhakti sufi movements there then this uh, vijayanagar empire is there then delhi sultanate mughals there then shivaji the great administration uh, you know these terms are very important for you especially when you talk about uh, medieval india mughal terms are important delhi sultanate uh, administrative judicial revenue terms are important or some administrative terms are important similar way vijayanagar and cholas important okay then bhakti sufi related terms are important that you how to cover a uh, terminology i have already done a series of uh, videos done so this also you cover it will help you a lot when it comes to exam okay just to try to cover it as quick as possible that's it